Okay, it's uh, great for us to get back in action. Um, the week off was, uh, it worked out terrific for us. Um, we're fresh, we're ready to go. This is as fresh as we're going to get in the middle of the season, so we're going to try to take advantage of it by putting together a really good day today and have a great day's work, and, and then we'll, we'll go to the next one, take them one day at a time, uh, getting ready for a, a terrific matchup. Um, the Cardinals couldn't have done much more to catch your attention than what they did uh, Monday night. They, they look great, and uh, they're, they're red hot and explosive and fired up and all of that, and, and uh, we better get our game right uh, to have a chance. Um, it, you can't watch this team without watching Kyler Murray and seeing what his, his effect on the game. Uh, his, his, his game changer, um, athleticism, poise, playmaking ability, and all of that, and, and you know they've got guys around him. Uh, Kenyon Drake is, is an explosive football player, as we saw again on Monday night. Remembered that all the things that he's done in the past. Uh, receivers are terrific. You know, this is, this is it really it's a really good team to be dealing with. It happens to be division time for us. Uh, we want to play it just like it's a championship game, like we do every week, and go for it and do everything we can to get a great win. So, uh, I don't know about you, I'm all fired up about it. Can't wait to get to practice today. Chris Francis. Hey, Coach, uh, speaking of being everywhere, Buda Baker uh, was, has been great. Um, talk about his development a little bit, and how close was he to becoming a Seahawk, possibly? No, oh, we, yeah, we really liked him. Um, you know, we saw him grow up here, you know, and, and uh, he was just such a natural, instinctive football player. Just It, it just was clear that the, the size factor that, that might have, you know, deterred some people was, was just not – the consideration. He's just too good. He's become a fantastic factor, and, and uh, we have to know where he is and, and make sure that we're aware of him because he's making plays everywhere. Corbin? Hey, Pete. Jordan Simmons has gotten a lot of run for you guys the first five games at both guard spots, started against the Vikings. Looks like he's really found his niche as that swing guard for you. Considering all the injuries he's had dating back to college, what does it say about his character to keep coming back time and time again and playing at a high level for you? Yeah, I you know I have been aware that he, you know he hasn't had the chance to really just enjoy playing the game you know and, and been out there and keep coming back and just grow with the game. Uh, he, he's think of how far he's come with the limited amount of background play and it's because he's a really talented kid and he plays really hard and he's tough and huge and all that and so it's it's really it's, it's wonderful to see him out there and uh, he does give us flexibility. He he's a run blocker and a pass protector and he's a he's a monster of a size guy to to, to you know keep the guys away from Russell. So uh, we're really excited that he's been playing so regularly he's we have no problem he plays like a starter for us and and uh that's that's really that's a real bonus for us jen coach we saw that you saw him signed michael kendricks to the practice squad what do you hope he brings to the mix well michael's a really good ball player and uh we 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 thought he did uh, great stuff for us in the past um, had a huge injury, has done a marvelous job of returning. Um, right now, you know, this is the first day that he's practiced, you know, since he got hurt. So uh, we're going to take it slow and make sure that, you know, Mike's gets enough time to get going again. Then we'll see where he fits in. He's, he's uh, versatile. Uh, he's going to start, you know, at, at his, his best spot at will and, and get, get in there and see how he does there, knowing that he can play the Sam spot. And uh, we used him all over the place when he, when he was here. So in the last couple of years, so we're we're really excited to get him back. Really thrilled that Mike, you know, will take this time to to get himself uh, football shape and and uh, he, he's well conditioned kid. He and he's strong as hell. So it's none, none of that stuff. He just needs to get football wise ready. And and uh, so I'm I'm really happy that he's here. I, I've really liked Mike and and I'm glad that he's with us. John. Pete, this, this game kicks off a stretch of four division games in the next five weeks. Just uh, You haven't played anybody in the division yet, but how, how good does the NFC West look and, and how tough is it going to be for whichever team emerges? I think this is as tough as it gets. I don't know that anybody's got to play, you know, a, a row of teams like this. And so we'll have a, we'll, a month from now, you know, we'll have a pretty good feel for how everything's fitting. Um, it's exciting to see the division, you know, come back around like this. You know, it, it, we've seen it go kind of up and down over the years, and, and uh, it always seems to keep coming back strong. And we're strong again. Everybody can play football. Uh, there's, you know, injury factors have have entered into some of the play of the teams, and and as everybody kind of finds their way, gets back to balance, it's a really difficult schedule uh, for us. And and uh, so we, we take them one week at a time, and we, they we're going to play them every one of them like it's the only game in the world, and uh, and go for it. And uh, that's what we're doing this week. Joe. 
Uh, Pete, just there, about 30 minutes ago, Adam Schefter reported that um, the Seattle Seahawks are uh, in a position to push to sign Antonio Brown after his reinstatement in week eight. Just curious if you can comment on that and your potential interest in Antonio. We have uh, we have endeavored to, to be in on everything that's going on, and John has done a marvelous job of always being tuned in to what's happening, and uh, and this is this is no exception, you know. So we'll see what happens, you know, as we go forward. But uh, we're 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 tuned into what's happening there. With a player like that, how uh, much digging do you have to do into his troubles, both on the field and with teams, and into <clears throat> what has happened off the field? Yeah, we're, we're you know we're nowhere there right now, so let, let's wait and, and see what happens and, and, and all that. But they you know, we do all of the homework we can think of doing. I mean, we we will never uh, think that we can leave a stone unturned, and so uh, that's how we uh, you know how we approach everything, and uh, so that's we're, we'll continue to do that here. Greg. <clears throat> Pete, how much is that decision on to pursue Brown related to Josh Gordon's situation and whether you're going to get him back or not? Well, you know, I mean, all I can tell you is that we're doing, you know, we're in on everything, you know, and, and uh, um, you know, we know about Josh, Josh's situation as well. And uh, we're just, you know, we take them as they come kind of, and, and hopefully we're really well prepared to, to make the right choices and, and figure it out how it fits and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, those are not connect. Those situations are not connected. They're handled independently. Fans see the name Antonio Brown. Of course, they go crazy and the, the possibilities of that. Can you at least handicap how realistic this possibility is, or is this just an agent floating something out there for getting leverage and interest? Um, okay, I don't want to answer either end of that, the way you presented that question. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, um, well, we just, you know, this is what happens. You know, there's, this is a high-profile football player, and uh, and he's had a tremendous history and all that. So, um, the fact that it's really, you know, it's it's everybody's curious about it. It makes sense, and so um, <laughs> I don't think I answered any of the other one of those. Okay, next. <laughs> I tried. Good shot, Tim. Pete, what's the plan for this week with uh, Jamal Adams and Jordan Brooks? Um, well, they're on their own plans. Um, Jordan is at practice. Uh, we'll be at practice today, and uh, Jamal will hold out. Um, we need more information there. Uh, so, and, and each one of these are just one day at a time. See what happens, and then see what happens the next day. Uh, how guys, re you know, return. So, um, I, I, we won't really know anything till later in the week. What more information are you seeking regarding Jamal's injury? Uh, whether he's full speed or not. Nico? Uh, hey, Pete. I hey. just wanted to ask, is there any uh, correlation with this uh, Michael Kendricks move into how Jordan Brooks is playing out or how uh, Cody uh, Barton has been playing? No, right now it's just getting good football players that are available and, and give them a chance to compete. It's a long season. So much stuff happens, and, and we need all the help we can get to to in, you know endure and uh, Michael's been a really good ball player and uh, you know the fact that he's played all over the place his experience and all that you know that it's we're fortunate to get him on on our practice squad right now um, you know he's still a free agent and all that and and uh, uh, but he's you know he's 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 on his road to recovery right now and coming back in proving that he can do it so um, uh, but the other side of it, let me say this too: that um, Jordan coming back this week, if that's what happens, and he and he can play in the game, well, that makes that makes us happy. Now we're excited to get that guy out there, and and uh, we'd love to see him play some more and, and get you know just get some action and just get comfortable with with our play. Uh, Cody's done a nice job uh, filling in at the will spot, and and so uh, this is a competitive situation, and we'll just let it play itself out. Thank you, Coach. Sure, Jackie. Hey, Coach, going back to Kyler Murray, how has he developed in his second year here in the league? And then just what challenges does he present with his mobility? Um, he, he really presents ultimate challenges. Um, there's only a, you know, a, a couple guys like him that, that are playing this league be, because of the, the explosive speed that you see. Um, uh, in, uh, this year, more than last year, he just looks more in command of the game. He's uh, 
he's making really good choices to take advantage of his ability to run. He's averaging 11 yards a scramble, you know, so he, that's really huge numbers. He's had some big plays uh, with, with those opportunities. So, um, and he's really smart about it. He does a really good job of not getting hit. He's, you can barely lay a glove on the guy. And so he, he's got great awareness about it, you know, what he can do and what he can get away with and all that. And, He's really difficult. It's a really difficult factor for their team. And as he continues to grow and, and, and he's playing really well in the red zone, that's a real indicator, uh, you know, that a young quarterback's really coming on. Um, and so, uh, you know, he, he's going to be difficult. He looked great last you know, Monday night. Thank you. Bob. Um, hey, Pete. Well, maybe just to get all these out of the way. On, on Josh Gordon, did you guys anticipate you would know something by now when, when, when you signed him? Or is there any frustration with not knowing anything on that situation? Or uh, We weren't sure. We just had to just kind of wait it out and you know wait for the information to come to us. We, we, we didn't have a timeline on it. And Philip Dorsett, is he any closer to returning or what's his situation? Yeah, yeah. I'm getting really good reports from Phil. He, he's feeling good about his running and... and uh, you know, we're just trying to make sure and guarantee that he's once he's back, he stays back. We don't want to rush that at all. Um, but he, uh, yesterday, they said that was the best day he's had since he came to camp. And so, uh, you know, he's getting closer. And we're pretty excited about that. Art? Pete, you talked uh, a lot about Buda Baker, how good he was back in 27, uh, 2017 draft. Were you close to taking him with your top pick? Uh, I, you know, really, Art, I can't remember what the what the what that situation was in terms of Buddha, but uh, we wanted him as, as a guy to be on our team. I, it wasn't necessarily about our pick. We might not have had a chance. I, I don't remember exactly the circumstances of who else was there at the time, but he, he's he's a great talent, and uh, we would love to have had him on our team. We just weren't able to get it worked out. Brady. My question was just uh, was asked, so I'll pass. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for passing. Appreciate passing. Yeah. Hey, Pete. Um, just going back to Jackie's question, how rare is it to see a quarterback develop from year one to year two in terms of decision making, um, and just knowing, yeah, and and that presence of the command in the offense. And is there anyone you can equate that to? Um, Besides three on your team. There, there's, there's just a logical learning curve. That first experience it can be such a blur to the guys, you know, that, that when you come back, everything looks different, you know. And, and uh, this is a really natural football player. I mean, he, he already has great feel for the game, uh, and he understands his own ability well. Um, I think he's, he seems to be more bold this time around in, in taking off. Uh, in, in, in making things happen, um, it, it's it's a natural emergence and you know and growth that happens. You know, Russ uh, Russ is the best example because they're, they're more similar style and, and impact in the, the way they play the game. Um, so it, it, there's just so much to to learn and so much to grow. But when you have that much natural ability like Russ had, you know, the decisions just kind of come to him and, and they they make things look easy kind of at times. And uh, they're just really special ball players, you know, and the instincts, the savvy. The awareness and you know, all that stuff, you know, and it, I, you know, I would really attribute a lot of that to his all-around uh, athletic ability, playing baseball and football, and probably was a ridiculous point guard in high school and and all that. You know, I don't know if he played or not, but uh, you know, it's all of those skills it takes to have the awareness to make the decisions that they do and the and and create the opportunities and the options that they that they find. And so, um, so he, he's gonna he's gonna be a fantastic player for a long time. He's just getting going. Rest talks about his commitment to greatness and given everything you said can you kind of see that as well in in Kyler because there has to be that commitment yeah you know I don't know that I, I don't you know I don't know him well at all so I, I don't know I, I would just the big time decisions he's always made where he's chosen to, to go and play and and uh, put himself in position you know not go baseball and go football you know he, he's deep 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 into into competing you know and and so uh I would think his commitment to it is, is, is you know, a classic, if, if you will, commitment to being a great competitor. I, I can't imagine him not being that, that. I don't know that, but I would. It, everything leans that way and looks that way. Thanks. Michael Sean. Hey, Pete, how have these conversations you've had with your team about voting differed from maybe 2012 or oh, 2016? Man. Yeah, we're... 
yeah, we're in a whole different, whole different ball game. I mean, I'm wearing shirts all the time, you know, and, and everything else. And we're talking about stuff. Gave an update on the national voting numbers, um, you know, today in the meeting. We we just kept it topical. Um, I think I think our country has has taken a whole new step in this regard and awareness and all of that, and which is a really positive move for for all of us and and you know people allowing themselves the power of of take in making their vote. Um, is is really a wonderful aspect of what our country and democracy is all about. So, uh, I'm I'm thrilled that we're in, involved with it, and I, I regret the fact that we weren't better talking about it before, and we should have known. Why shouldn't? I, why didn't I know then? But we know differently now, and and so uh, this is a this is a really special time, and hopefully all of the young kids, the ones that are turning, you know, voting age, and those that are you know, approaching it, will be a part of this wave of of uh, focus and interest in what you know what's so important in our country. So it's a really great time. Uh, was there something maybe personally for you that created a sense of urgency uh, this time around versus those other uh, election cycles when you're coaching the team? Yeah, I, I I I do think so. You know, I think that I'm more socially aware uh, than I've ever been, and and uh, I've been more influenced, more clearly, more clearly committed, and and. Uh, um, in, in really respecting the role that I have and the opportunity I have to, to help other guys and influence the people around. Um, also to vote, you know, we're doing, making commercials, we're, we're doing everything we can think of to, to help out. Uh, it's, it's just been an, an outpouring of, of, uh, of awareness. And uh, I, I honestly, I, I feel kind of bad that, I, that it wasn't more obvious before, but um, this is where it is now. We need to cash in and make, and make change. And, and uh, so we ought to do that, we all got to be the change. And that means we got to act in accordance and speak speak on the topics and be willing to, to make a statement and all of that so thank you sure. joe fan yeah a couple quick follow-ups just to be clear did, did jamal suffer a setback no okay and then uh with josh gordon um i know we've asked you about it a ton but have you gotten a reason why this has taken so long we've seen alden smith and david irving and other players get reinstated but it's been complete radio silence with josh and you know, even Antonio Brown, it came out. This is the length of his expense, uh, suspension, and then you kind of knew what the timetable was. But um, this seems really interesting that the NFL hasn't announced anything. I'm just curious if you've been told anything. No, it just everybody's in their it's it is in their own you know in their own cycle, and uh, each one is considered independent of, of the others, and and the decisions are made by the league. And we really don't know and don't have contact uh, to speak of here. So, we, you know, we don't know any more than, than really you do at this point. We're just waiting it out for word from the league, unfortunately. So are you, are you done asking those questions or <laughs> you keep going? Last we can, question. You can, next Art. we can do it again, Joe. I, I'll, I'll tell you, I just don't know that I know have, have much for you on this topic. I'm sorry. Don't mind you asking. Art, last uh, question. Uh, Pete, have you or the club had any uh, talk, conversation with public health officials about uh, admitting fans for the next home game? Um, I, I, I don't know specifically about that, Art, but I do know that we're listening and waiting for all of the information that comes in. And, and uh, you know, we're we're just going along with whatever you know guidance tells us and and uh we want to do the right thing this is a very difficult time right now this is not like everything's getting great there's a very difficult time and i can see if we don't make any move in that direction to change from where we are i, I could totally understand that and support that um so but I, I don't they're not asking me you know and and uh i'm in in the ball so i don't i'm not really including them, but i do know that our guys are listening you know in in part of the conversation they can be part of so all right, thank you, everyone. See you, everybody. Jaron Reed is up next.